Hello dears and welcome back to another Alicia Online video. It's actually been a hot minute since I've recorded one of these. More so since I've recorded any Alicia Online related content. I think it was like two months ago that I did one for like 30 seconds and then it's been like three months since I did a racing video. I, I really need to make more Alicia content. That was the, Those were always like my favorite to edit. That's neither here nor there. You are here because of the title of this video. So. Two things. This video will be scripted once I actually get into it. And secondly, this is actually a remake video of sorts uh, from an old video I had made a while ago. Mostly because that video was outdated and things are being added to the game. So I figured I would kind of update it. Plus that video had shit audio and I, and I was still very shy about talking while recording. Yeah. So let's go ahead and get into it. If I do sound like I am reading, it is because I am. Like I said, this is scripted, but that's neither here nor there. I'll do my best to make it seem as human as possible. <laughs> Based on the title, you are here to hear about breeding. I can't promise you that this will help you get the coat that you want. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna say that this can. This video is more so to better explain breeding, especially for a new player that might have leveled up and now can get access to breeding, but they have no idea where to start. So I'm going to break this video into three big parts, and I will leave timestamps up on the screen right now and down in maybe the pinned comment or the description for the specific parts that I'm breaking this video into. The three big parts are as follows. The first part is going to be just a rundown of breeding what you see in the game and explain it a bit better for new players. The second part will be how breeding is supposed to work with the information we have currently as well as how it worked in the old version of the game. And lastly, the third part will be why breeding doesn't work the way intended with examples. And I promise we do not have a gambling addiction here. I swear. I promise. You won't get one either. <clears throat> okay, with all that out of the way, this information is a showcase of years of experience while playing the game, which is about six years in value from me personally, as well as observations from some of my older friends that have bred that I've watched breed and conversations from various people and just a few through the grapevine things here and there that people had talked about. I've been on this game long before breeding was ever added. So, I made use of global chat to talk to older players that explained how the breeding worked originally, and so on and so forth. I'm also going to be taking parts from the fan wiki, as well as the original wiki that was out called Alicia on Heart. I will get more into those later. Alrighty, so future me here explaining how breeding works. Welcome! You are a new player that has just reached level- hold on, let me scooch my chair. Okay. You are a new player who has reached level 10, and now you have access to breeding! But you go in, and you see everything, and you're so confused on what you're supposed to do. I've got you, I'm here. Let me show you. You go down to care, and you click on breeding. And then you see all of this gorgeous mumbo jumbo, and you are confused understandable. Let us work bit by bit. Your horses show here. These are all of your horses. Lovely horses. I adore them. And then if you hover over a horse and you right click, you can see the lineage. I will get more about this lineage in this video later. But you can see them. This works for your horses as well as the horses down in breeding. Just right click over a random horse. Go ahead and select the horse and right click and there's that lineage. Hello, Murphy. And that is how you see your lineage as well as your fellow player's lineage. These are all player horses. So you're breeding player horses. And you would click on this if you found a horse you wanted to breed. But my, <laughs> my pasture is full, my ranch is full, so I have no space. And I will not be freeing space. And this is where you'll see your stats. I will get into stats in another video, possibly. I haven't really decided that in potential. It would be short, but this is just for breeding. So your stats, your control, agility, speed. 
Plus, I'm pretty sure there's another video in general about stats, hopefully. Now, to get to the tabs down here, you have the horse name, the lineage, the arrow going down shows you that it has a full line of whatever the coat is. And then you can check your tab here. Full black, full white. So, let us speak about the genetics next. The genetics, as you can see, is the probability of a foal with the same appearance as the father. The higher the pregnancy chance, the higher of the genetics chance. Basically what this means is if arrow is down, bad. If arrow is sideways, 50-50. If arrow is slightly slanted, not completely bad, but still low chance. Let's look for let's look for a high high chance. Up, good chances. If arrow slightly up, still pretty good chances. That's basically what the genetics means. So always look at your arrows to see if you have a high or low chance of getting whatever coat you're going for. The fee is the amount of carrots you will have to spend to breed that horse. 40 carrots is the cap. You spend, I believe, 20 carrots to put a horse up for 40 carrots, or 40,000, 40, sorry, 40,000. And the cheapest, for grade 8 anyway, the cheapest is 10,000 10, uh, 10, carrots, which you spend 5,000 carrots to put up. Now the lowest price possible is yeah four 40k or 4k for four four thousand carats i don't know how much you put up i'm thinking two thousand carats i've never actually had to put a horse up that was that low because breeding came in a lot later and i never really bothered i just saved my money and then i ended up hitting grade eight horses so but that is the lowest now, the pregnancy chance is the difference in grade between two parents' horses is too large, the chance of pregnancy is lowered. So if you have a grade 8 horse, which none of mine are, except this boy, um, the higher your horse's grade, the lower the chance of you being able to get a foal. And which I do see a lot of people forget this fact when they're breeding. But yes, you're... you're better off breeding a grade 8 with a grade 8 or even a grade 7 with a grade 8 because the chance is still relatively close but if you're breeding a grade 8 with a grade 11 which is the highest level you have on a horse your chances are very slim to none next time left is when you put a horse up it remains for 24 hours total and you can take it out which I can go ahead and show you because spirit you say you got a horse that you can put up, you can only put horses up that are grade 8. Anything above grade 8 cannot go in breeding. You put a horse up, you got a horse, you put a horse up, go to register, and then here you can put the price that you would like to put the horse up, and then this will be the amount of carrots that you will pay to put the horse in breeding. I should put spirit up though. What are your stats? 76? Oh yeah, I was split statting you. I'll, I'll do that later. Um, the i'll go into this, this again but this is somewhat important the max total stats you can put a horse up that keeps it at grade eight is 178 or 179 that is the total amount of stats a horse can have the second it goes over 180 it will grade up to level nine and then you won't be able to put it in breeding so be mindful you can take your horse out early, or yeah, you can take your horse out early by coming back here and clicking unregister. This will become unregister if you've put your horse up. And then for your favorites, you can just add them to your favorites list here. So let's say you're going for this kind of horse, you add it to your favorites, you add that again. And then you can scroll through the tab. And then the horses you've kept will go in your favorites and they will stay there till you take them out. I don't know why they are remo aren't removed automatically after they've been removed from breeding entirely, but you have to take them out automatically or you have to take them out manually. But if you're looking through, sifting through the, the, the tab, your favorites will always stay there. 
if you're looking for like a specific coat. So that's everything here. And now we get into the search. So you have your breeding list, favorites, the grade, and the search. You click search. And this is where you will see all of the coats, all of the mains, and the tail styles. You will never be able to filter out mane and tail colors. You'll get to see them when you're looking through the horses. So you can just go with the styles. Now I want you to notice these stars. These indicate different rarities. The higher the rarity, the difficulty increases. This mains only go up to two and the curly tail is the only two star. Now down here is the skills. These are how you filter out the stats. People use magic speed hybrid horses, or control speed hybrid horses for magic, and people use speed strength hybrids for speed races, but really it's up to preference. Whatever feels better for you, whatever you have the most luck with, go with it. And then if you want a clear filter, you just click the clear filter. So this is pretty standard, pretty easy. And that leaves it for breeding. Back to the other me. Let's go ahead and dive into what we do know for the second part of this video. One, we know the breeding runs on an RNG. RNG stands for Random Number Generator, for anyone that doesn't know. Pretty simplified, pretty self-explanatory. Two, we have 43 total things that the RNG runs on between the coats, the main intel colors, and the main intel styles, both of which are two individual things. Three, lineage of the horse that you have while breeding. Again, go in, de in depth. Four, this part is not implemented into the game currently as of recording, but into the future when the game is fully up and running with like the vast majority of the original stuff before they can add in any of the newer content that it will be implemented in the future so i will be going over that but what isn't implemented that also helps with breeding is a ranch skill called resemblance i will go into this later as well five the horse you are breeding with is the mother this does kind of tie into number four and the horse you are breeding to, that is in breeding, is the father. Six, beauty on your horse helps breeding chances. Not the coat, not the mane, tail, color, or the style, but it ups your chances on getting a foal all together. Seven, hearts on your horse also help with your chances. The lower the hearts, the lower the chances, so always keep an eye on your hearts. I've mentioned this in part one. And lastly, number eight, this one is more of debunking a myth. If you go into your horse's profile, you will see this clover. In the past, people equated the clover being in a good or excellent condition means that you get a better coat or better breeding overall. This came out when breeding was first available and people didn't really know how it worked out other than people from the original game explaining it, but because things aren't implemented the way they're supposed to be, or they're not implemented at all, it's really up in the air, even with older players that played the original. So this clover does not do anything with breeding. If you hover over the word luck, it says the more luck, the lower the chance of an injury on your horse. Which means if the clover is lower in a poor condition, your horse has a quicker chance of getting injured in a race, whereas if it's excellent, it'll take longer. We know it doesn't help with breeding because if it did, it would state as such like the beauty tab does when you're cleaning your horse, but it doesn't, therefore it does not actually equate to helping you breed. It's just for injury, for achievements, and beauty guru, that's it. So with all that out of the way, let's get into how breeding is meant to work with all of the information we have from the game and from the Wikipedia. Again, the sources I'm using are from personal experience, about six years worth, and the two wiki pages, which I will leave linked down below, Alicia on Heart and the Alicia Online Fan Made Wiki. The Fan Made Wiki explains that luck matters 
Again, it does not. So I personally trust the Alicia Online on Heart wiki because that one has actually been updated recently with the new coats and the new flax and mane. Whereas the Alicia fan made wiki, I haven't really seen if it's been updated recently. So just personally for me, I would go with Alicia on Heart. But you do you. Again, I'll leave a link down below. So. For anyone that doesn't know, the current Alicia Online we have is a remake of sorts, kind of a remaster, brought back by volunteers who do this for free in their spare time, keep the server running. That being said, they do not owe you shit and you shouldn't put them on a pedestal. They are still human at the end of the day. And they have done some problematic things, had some shitty behaviors in the past, but that's neither here nor there. If you want to look into it, be my guest. But back to breeding. How breeding is supposed to work is as follows. The lineage is supposed to matter. You can find it by clicking your horse's profile and clicking ancestry and taking a look. Here's one of mine. The higher the lineage, the better chances of getting that horse. The cleaner the horse, the better chances you get in breeding for a foal, regardless of looks and coat. This is why in breeding you will see horses named full amber line, full white line, full curly line, spiky line, etc. That is because these names show you the horse's lineage is a full line of a single coat or mane and tail style. You can also fact check these, which I highly recommend, which I went over in the showcasing breeding proportion, where you just hover over the horse that you want to look into and then you right click it and it'll pop up the breeding panel that you can see the line. Sadly, we cannot see potential and we cannot see mane and tail colors and styles of the parents. So with this, we do have to kind of rely and trust the person that's advertising it since we can only see the coat lineage instead of all of the other stuff. And do not get me started on potential. Please don't. That is a story for another video if I plan to make it, if people want it. I don't want to get into potential. I've had so much bad luck with potential. <laughs> So always fact check if the horse's line is as advertised, it can help. So now that we have all that out of the way, what about mane and tail colors and styles? How do we get those? Well, originally it came down to your horse's horses. Here is an image taken from the Alicia on Heart page about the outdated information that we had about the older version of the game, which is not implemented now, currently, in this new server. So. Basically, it says that it goes on uh, your horse's style and color. Pretty self-explanatory. But one of the reasons I think this doesn't work is because of the ranch skill, which I mentioned, which I will now be going into. The ranch skill I am talking about is the resemblance skill. You can find this and your horse's profile under ranch skill, and you can scroll down and you can find it. None of these ranch skills are implemented. None at all. But as you can see, resemblance shows that it will get the coat or it will look more like the mother, which is your horse. So let's use a white horse as an example. You managed to get a white horse from breeding. Now use that horse, regardless of its mane or tail, color and style, to breed for more white horses. And then slowly but surely, with this ranch skill implemented and functional, you will start to get more white coats. And then after that, the RNG can t start ticking off all of the other coats because by then you should have a pure white line on a white horse. Then the RNG should only focus on mane and tail colors and mane and tail styles. And then slowly but surely you just work your way up to getting the horse you want. And by the end of it, you should have a white horse with whatever mane, tail, color, and style that you would like. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> Why, may you ask, does it not work that way? Because of the RNG. But that is for later. Basically, you breed the horse that you want with the horses that you have, you slowly build up a lineage, and then you just eventually get the horse you want. That is how breeding is supposed to work. But then you toss in the rarity aspect, which for horse coats goes up to three stars and for mane and tail styles goes up to two stars. It, it just drops in a bunch of eggs into an apple basket. It's just all a mess. So 
the rarer the coat, the rarer the hairstyles, and maybe even the mane and tail colors. I have no proof of this mattering, but you see gray manes more frequently than you see black and white manes on black horses and brown manes more so than the white and the flaxen, so really depends. Basically, overall, the rarer the things that you want on the horse, the harder they are to get. Which is pretty average in most of these games like this. But there is a limitation. I spent two years trying to get a white mane. I, I went for long, thick, and long, thick tail. But I that's what I went for. A white mane dapple gray. Yes, you heard that correctly. Dapple gray, not bay. A two-star coat. I have better chances nowadays with Overos than I do with ever dapple grays. Two years with full line and everything. And then I eventually got one when I breeded a sooty bay with one of my mealy bays. I don't know how. I can't explain how. But that is, that is the essence of breeding, my dear friend. It is disgusting, and I hate it. We do not have a gambling diction, I promise. So you keep your horse clean, you build up a strong lineage of the coat you want, and start smashing horses with the main tail styles and colors that you want, and eventually you get the horse you want. But again, it doesn't work this way. Why does it take two years to get a coat that you want when the coat is, like, the least rarest coat you want? Again, the RNG. Now, let us get into why people have a gambling- <clears throat> I mean, why people breed. Why people breed on this game. And why we struggle so hard. RNG stands for Random Number Generator, as mentioned before. Very easy, self-explanatory. But also, as I mentioned, the game has a total of 43 things to work with between the tails, the manes, the colors of each of those, and then the coats, as well as the rarity of said items. And that might sound good on paper. 43 things ain't that bad. Nah. You put that on paper, but then you slam it into an RNG. So imagine what it looks like in an RNG. It looks like my bedroom, which is a fucking mess right now. Okay? That's what it looks like. Let me explain. As stated, a lineage should be a surefire way to get a coat you want. And in some cases it is. But I have plenty of great horses that come from broken lines. Let me show you a few of them. And now, the Nations of the World, brought to you by Yakko Warner. United States, Canada, Mexico, Panama, Haiti, Jamaica, Peru, Republic, yeah, Dominican, Cuba. Sorry, I kind of ran out of horses there. But you get the gist. All of those horses I showed you have broken lines. It means that they were born with either next to no shared coat trait as the one they have, or they were just plain random. I shall use Peter as an example. He is a blue roan with a white long mane and a curly tail, but look at his ancestry. Three whites, two mealies, and a champagne sabino. The only blue roan coat trait he has is the one on his back. The very flesh that he has is the only blue roan line on his lineage. This means that his offspring will have a higher chance of being a, a Champagne Sabino because the white and the mealy traits are rarer than that of the Champagne. Though I may get a white or a mealy when I breed him with another horse, that doesn't guarantee that they will have good stats or look good. And we're not even going to talk about stats either. I'll leave stats and potential for another video because those are just ugh. Don't even get me started, especially early game. Ugh. Let me show you what a full line looks like. Take a look at my sweet baby, Slipnir. My full line, spiky Overo. The offspring to my beloved white mane Overo, Loki. Both his parents and his grandparents had a full line of Overo. So the chances of getting him were better. But, and I mean a very large cow-sized but, it took me nine months to get him. As you can see from his tab on his horse profile, the born portion or his birth portion, 
he came out in September 3rd, 2021. That is his birthday. The Overo coat came out in May of 2021. And it took me almost the rest of the year to get him. The amount of breeding it took, the amount of blood, sweat, and tears, and carrots, and sacrifices to Satan, it took. The amount of box hunting it took me to go through to make sure I didn't end up poor while trying to go for him. <sighs> and can we just for a second admire his description? Some say the food is good. Some say the floor is cold. There is a problem of discrimination. The manager has awakened. Slip near as a Karen confirmed. I love my sweet boy. I just, honestly, look at some of your horse's descriptions. They are bonkers. I love them. Ooh. They're tasty. I adore them. I adore. I don't know who is running the descriptions for your horses, but keep up the fantastic work. Your humor is on point sometimes with some of my horse descriptions. But anyway, <laughs> you may be asking why it took so long to get a two-star coat, which is supposed to be easier than a three-star coat. Two reasons. One, his mane and tail styles are rarer. And two, the RNG. I mentioned this heavily in my old video and still stand by it, the RNG has no proper filter to filter out coats in a lineage. And I still very much believe that the lineage goes right to the great grandparents, which you can't even see on your horse's ancestry profile. I have bred enough to notice if a grandparent's coat is an issue. I have had whole horse family lines while breeding for coats, and I got the grandparents' coats as well as just random coats and mane and tail colors and styles. And I really wish I would have thought ahead so I could properly <laughs> document them <clears throat> to showcase here, but I had never planned to remake this video into the this one, and I really don't want to have to go through my horse breeding service again to find those horses. It's, it's not worth the money, it's not worth my sanity. <laughs> Without a proper filter, you are doomed to get every single combination available in breeding since lineage doesn't really help the way it's supposed to. This also ties in with the fact that the resemblance ranch skill and ranch skills in general aren't implemented. I can't say for a guarantee that the day comes that the ranch skill is implemented that it might help. I have no evidence currently to say that it does or does not, but currently lineage very much is random lineage is only good for bringing in money if you have a full lineage horse and you pop that bitch in breeding and then people are gonna hit the crap out of it and you're gonna be rich yay you <laughs> good job win that fortune kings and queens and my non non-binary knights you've earned it and the only adjustments that they have put into breeding is when they added the new coats so that people would still get the new coat and it wouldn't take them too long. They upped the chance just a little and they had to add in the NPC horses that we could breed with to get the coat. But they have never made proper adjustments and multiple people will agree with this statement that breeding does not work the way it is intended currently. And I do think it's because the ranch skills aren't implemented because the resemblance one seems like it would help a lot with the RNG having to use 43 items and a hundred plus possible outcomes it is going to be random up the ass and get what you want and getting what you want depends on the rarity of what you're going for without a filter and without the ranch skill lineage doesn't matter too much but I won't say it is a complete crackpot idea. I mean, it obviously matters if everything's implemented properly, but we have to wait. I don't know if the developers could implement a filter of some sort, or it might not work with the game being as old as it is. 
but breeding will be a struggle, especially if you are more on the impoverished side of things, unless changes are made. And that's, again, not getting me started on stats or potential. Again, that's a video for another time if I make it. But it all comes down to the rarer the horse you want, the harder it's going to be. Which is fine. People shouldn't get things easy. But we shouldn't have to wait two years to get the things we want. Going off script, uh, Wild Shade has a better breeding system. It's simpler. It's simplified. Because they don't use lineage. It only depends on the two parents that you're, you, you're using. I've gotten a lot of good horses just between the horses I had and then bred to the horse I want and then I got it and then you slowly wake your way, work your way through with all the markings. It's a simpler breeding system than what Alicia has. So currently, breeding is just in shambles. Like my kneecaps after I first woke up and I have to go to the bathroom and then I nearly crumple on the floor half asleep. If the ranch scales come out and we get resemblance, I do hope that it does help. Again, I have no proof to say that it does. I have no proof to say that it doesn't. That will have to be a, for another day when it does get implemented and we can actually test it out and see if it helps. But I'm going to go ahead and leave this here. Hopefully this helped. Hopefully this <laughs> explained. Um, I will go ahead and leave the first video linked below because that's cringy. And if you're having a bad day and you just want to see somebody <laughs> be cringy, be my guest. It was a little more explained, simpler, too. So if this one doesn't seem like it helped you, you can try that one. Just please note that there's audio, bad audio, and it was, I was very shy. So, but yeah, hopefully this helped. If it didn't, I am very sorry. I wish I could tell you how to get the coats that you want and the horses that you want, but I just can't. I, like many, like everybody, I've had so much problems with breeding. Nothing I did helped, but yeah, I'm gonna leave this here. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys found this helpful. If you did, could you please consider leaving a like? That would let me know that this actually did help. And I, if people, more people like it, I'll go ahead and be more drawn to making the potential stat video, which I'm probably still gonna do it anyway, but it would just, I would just feel better knowing that people would actually Want, want that instead of just doing it so yeah i'll see you guys in the next one bye